my thing is eating out of my pantry because I don't know about you, but my delivery has taken a long time for my groceries to come. And we have to learn to be adaptive and resourceful and to stretch our ingredients uh, in the best way possible. And I already hate waste. So this has been an amazing opportunity um, to really be creative, um, innovative, and to um, and really, you know, push you um, because there's always another meal. So there's a lot of forgiveness in this. And um, is there someone, is there no sound? Someone has no sound? Everybody can hear me. Can you just give me a thumbs up so I can hear? Yeah, I can sing a lot of thumbs. So um, it's really an opportunity. These are just recipes. And the idea is that we're keeping the recipes really simple and stuff that I'm hoping that you have in your pantry. And if you're not, I'm going to give you some suggestions on what to use. Um, but, you know, and feel free. It's live. And so I love your questions. I love your comments. I'd love you to tell me where you are. And um, it really adds a great dimension to the class. So a big shout out to all the Ezra members who are online today um, from Israel. Ezra is a beautiful organization um, that was started, I think, over 30 years ago by a woman from South Africa and was all about connecting Anglos together in Israel, but while doing good and raising needed funds for um, various children in need for educational purposes. And I'm very grateful to be involved with that organization. And it was because of Glennis who, who passed on. So it's nice to see a lot of new members um, online today. So today's recipes, we're in, okay, let me look, we're April 19th. We've just finished Passover and hooray. Um, I don't know about you, but it went so fast for me. I'm not sure why. Um, and the sun is gorgeous and it's springtime here in Ranana. And I hope it's springtime wherever you are today. And so um, I think it's a time of re-energizing. I think Passover has been a marker for all of us. We're like, let's just get to Passover. And now we're like another reboot. So I wanted to pick something that, um, again, A, that you would have the ingredients and B, also that sort of brings some imagination um, out of your pantry and to travel a little bit. So we're gonna be making today some satay chicken kebabs um, with the peanut butter sauce. Everybody has peanut butter in their pantry, right? Like I travel with my peanut butter. It's my security, my insurance. So I'm hoping you have peanut butter. If you don't, you can make, you have almond butter. You can, you know, do with that. You can make your own peanut butter if you want. Um, you, you know, so that's gonna be one of the main ingredients that we're gonna be making a fluffy basmati rice, which I actually just remember we did in my first class with the vegetarian chili. But again, that feels like four years ago. So we're going to be making basmati rice and the secrets to keeping your rice fluffy and separated, and not goopy and gloopy. Um, and then we're going to be making um, a raw dessert that's being used um, with ingredients here that are very, very energizing. And I first really discovered this when I was on a bicycling trip on my 39th birthday, and I'm coming up to my 49th birthday. So I've been doing this for 10 years. And it's basically with mejul dates, which are grown here in Israel and um, with nuts. And we're basically gonna be pureeing the dates and um, we're gonna be adding nuts and cocoa into it. And there's no sugar added, it's all natural ingredients, nothing is being cooked. So there's a whole stream of thought that that's even more energizing because no energy has been taken away from the food. Um, but truthfully, I eat them out of my freezer. They're like energy boosts. And um, they're really, really delicious. So that's what we're gonna be making today. So we're gonna be juggling, all the recipes are online for you. And um, the link, uh, Jordan is online right now and he should be posting the link. Um, but again, if you have problems with it, feel free to email me at chefshauna at gmail.com. And I'm happy to, to um, you know, answer any of your questions and any requests. So the first recipe we're gonna go on to is the basmati rice. And so for you to know, Basmati rice is a long grain rice. It's a long grain rice versus something like a sushi rice, which is a short grain rice. And rice is full of starch, right? Especially white rice. There's, there's no germ left to it. There's not as many nutrients left to it. So it cooks super quick. It fills you up quick. And then you're hungry a few, you know, an hour later because it doesn't really have anything left into it. If you had whole grain basmati rice, then that would keep you longer. 
But what I'm trying to differentiate right now is between long grain and short grain. So short grain examples would be sushi and would be risotto. Those would be short grain that are packed, packed with starch. And you want that starch because that's what's sticking the rice together. You don't want that to be separated. But frankly, when I'm eating rice, I want it to sort of flake apart, right? I want it to be fluffy and light and not goopy and thick and like just fall on my plate. So what the first thing you want to do is you want to measure your rice. This is one cup of rice. And I have my fine mesh strainer. Notice it's very fine mesh. You can't see me through it. So that's very important because I don't want to lose my rice. And I'm going to wash my rice. And washing the rice takes away the starch and um, makes it, you're going to have more of a chance that it's not going to be that goofy mess, which I'm sure, if any hands up, has anybody ever made bad rice? Um, I think that's like cooking 101. We've all screwed up our rices. So it seems like very basic, but I happen to love rice. And it's, um, it's a wonderful, versatile food. It's cheap and it stays in your pantry. So you can wash your rice like this, or you can put it into a bowl and swish around your, your hands in it and then clean out the rice. When you see that there's no more white, um, like cloudy water, then you know your rice is clean. Especially if you're buying it in here in Israel, there's a lot of open markets where you can scoop your rice. You always want to be sifting through because it's natural. There's stuff that goes into it. It's all, you know, it's just, just take a little peek. Better in the beginning than in the end after it's been cooked. So what we're doing is we have a frying pan, not a frying pan, a little saucepan, see? And I'm gonna put my rice, remember my rice is just clean and everything is cold, nothing is cooked. And I'm taking um, two, cups of, two cups of water. And when any time you're measuring liquid, you always wanna measure liquid in um, a Pyrex dish like this, okay? You measure dry ingredients in your dry measures and wet ingredients in your Pyrex, okay? And, okay, is everything okay? Can everybody still see me? Something's happening with the computer on my side. Can you take a look? Okay, something's happening. So I am just measuring. Um, is everything okay, Jordan? I'm on top of it. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to continue along. You measure two cups of water in our measuring, in our liquid measure. Always put it down so that you can take a look, like, you know, in your science class, your meniscus. So we have one cup of rice to two cups of water. Everything is cold, okay? Now, you don't need to have chicken stock. You don't need to have vegetable stock. We're just making plain rice. Of course, if you want to enrich anything, you want to start with the stock because that's a building block. But this is perfectly okay. Basmati rice or jasmine rice is already very, very aromatic on its own. So it doesn't need any fillers. It doesn't need anything else. And God forbid you put any of that yellow powder inside that they call chicken stock. Throw that away. Let pes a Pesach is over. All that is over. Rebirth. Get rid of that. That is just MSG and it's salt and there's nothing holistic about that powder. So we put in our water into our rice. Everything is cold. I'm moving it to my stove and I'm bringing it up to a boil, okay? And bringing it up to a boil is, you can stir as much as you want now if you feel a need to stir, because a lot of people love stirring rice. But if I can leave you with anything today, you never ever want to stir rice. Rice and stirring don't go together. Anything you want to do, A, get yourself a glass covered pot, because then you'll have a lid so you can actually look into it, because sometimes everybody wants to open and close, open and close. And steam is a big part of the cooking method. So if you just want to get some control, which I know we're all trying to fight for control these days, we're feeling helpless, we're feeling, we don't know when this is all going to end. So we focus on our food that we're going to control. But you know what? We can't control anything. So let that be a metaphor, nor your rice. So just let it be. And at the end, we're going to be fluffing our rice with something as simple as a fork. Zehu, that is it. So we're going to leave this come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to lower my heat and then I'm going to cover it. Notice I'm not stirring anything. If you want to add some extra flavor into the rice, you can put some peppercorns, like the whole corns. You can put a bay leaf. You can put a cardamom pod. You can put star anise. Anything in its whole form. So like a tea bag, it will, it will emanate. It, it will infuse into the water. 
But don't put any dry spices or anything like that. If you have any fresh herbs, like a rosemary, um, I just took this out from my garden. This grows everywhere in Israel. It's just some rosemary swigs. You can put some rosemary in there and that will also perfume the, the rice even more. But really, you don't have to do anything else. Keep it simple, okay? So once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna put my lid on, lower the heat, let it cook for another 10 minutes, turn it off, and let the steam continue to do the cooking, okay? That's the rice. So our next recipe we're gonna go on to is the satay chicken kebabs, okay? And so we are gonna be using some boneless, skinless um, chicken that here in Israel, it really comes very beautifully, I have to say. That was one of the nice, nice things um, in Israel. They, they, they take their schnitzel very seriously here. And so these thin pieces of chicken are called schnitzel. Again, you can use any boneless breast. You can use um, dark meat as well. You can use anything you really want, just something without a bone. Mind you, you can also use this marinade on any type of chicken. You can rub it all over your whole chicken and stick it into the oven as well. It's very, very aromatic and perfumed and, and full of wonderful flavors. So whenever I'm doing anything with meat, I always wanna have a separate cutting board because there's cross-contamination. And boy, we're really in, the contamination is definitely a word that we're hearing a lot these days. And I'd always say to you, always have a pair of rubber gloves in your kitchen, but I know you have them probably all over your house right now. So I know you have rubber gloves, um, especially for those who don't like to, to handle the chicken, they, you know, you don't like it. For all those vegetarians out there, you feel free to use tofu, firm tofu. Just press out the water and cut it into cubes, and then you can marinate in, in this marinade that we're going to be using. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to be cutting, the chicken comes in beautiful packages like this, all pounded beautifully. And the best time to cut your chicken is when it's going between thawing and defrosting. It's, it's much harder now, mine is more, more defrosted, so it's not in the best place to um, be cutting it. Um, but I cut most of it this morning. Um, but that's the best time to cut chicken, okay? And all this stuff, you have to make sure goes away because it's cross-contamination. Very, very important. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have bamboo sticks, which are right here. I found these in my pantry and I figured, you know what, we gotta make, make the meal a little bit exciting. Everybody loves to eat something on a stick. So we can pretend we're at a cocktail party and um, it's a good time to get used to all the stuff that we've been hoarding for so long. I don't know about you, but I, I can't believe Visa hasn't called me because there's been so little activity on my Visa card. And I miss the retail therapy. Someone on Facebook was saying, what do you miss? I miss TJ Maxx. I miss walking up and down the aisles of Marshalls. So there, there's definitely something lost, but you know, you can go shopping in your own pantry and be very pleasantly surprised what you have. Um, so on today I'm using the bamboo sticks that have been soaked in cold water. Why am I soaking them? Because um, Joanna's asking, what if we don't have peanut oil, we can definitely use vegetable oil. And truthfully, I have no peanut oil. So I'm gonna go into that adaptation. Um, you wanna soak the, the sticks in water because if you're putting them under the broiler in the oven, they could burn. So soaking the sticks prevents that burning. It just, or at least slows it down. It's, it's something to do. Um, and so what we're gonna do is, if, you, if you're nervous, you can put on your gloves, which I'm gonna do because um, I don't wanna cross contaminate anybody. And you know, we've been keeping the house nice and safe for the past month and a half. So we're not gonna lose it over a piece of chicken. So here we go. Um, take, your, take your knife. And just cut your, this is very, very thin chicken. This is not, I would not suggest using this, but the, again, we're adapting. This is what I had in my freezer and my butcher order is not coming for a few days. So I'm using this chicken and it's totally fine. I know that it's very thin. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's consistent. It's all thin. I don't have one piece that's thin, one piece that's thin. That's when you get in problems because one part gets overcooked and one part doesn't get cooked at all. And then your kids think that you're making them chicken salmonella and make fun of you forever which is what sometimes happens to me. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stick and you're gonna thread it. And I've been doing a lot of threading these days. I don't know about you, but I've been needle pointing. I pulled that up from, from the bag of my, when I have a waiting room issue, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna sit and knit or I'm gonna do some needle point. So the, hence uh, the, the needling and threading something. And notice what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to cover the stick, okay? I don't wanna see this and then a piece of chicken, and then a piece of stick like that. That like, that's really not classy, okay? 
And I know there's no guests, but you guys deserve class. And of course, I just did this right through my finger. Here we go. And you got to treat yourself with how you want to be treated too. So this is my beautiful chicken. Notice that there's no spaces in between the stick. And that just sort of makes it a little bit one, one notch um, more professional. Um, so like the TV show, um, so I'm gonna do another one over here so you can see. And I mean, there's not that much learning here. You could also fold it if you want to have thicker pieces. But again, if you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure that you do it for all of the pieces. And um, so they'll cook at the same time. Um, again, this is very thin, not, I think it looks better the other way, quite frankly. In fact, I'm gonna take it out because if it doesn't look right, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna make me happy. And once you're bothering to do something, do it properly. That's one of my mother's mantras that she would say to me. If you're gonna take the time, do it properly. So here we go. And we have stretched out the chicken. So it's one beautiful box. So I'm gonna move this tray over here, like the TV show, I'm going to take off my gloves so we know that everything is nice and sanitary. I'm gonna give my hands just another wash just in case. And I'm gonna show you the marinade. So our marinade is gonna be a mixture of amazing different spices, okay? And this beautiful thing about a marinade is people think marinades are rich and they're full of fat and they're adding all this stuff. Not at all. The trick to a good marinade are strong, strong flavors. And I, use, I specialize in low, um, low fat cooking and, and baking. And, um, and so when you if take away the fat, you always want to overcompensate with flavors because fat is a carrier of flavor. So you're always trying to find different ways to punch things up. You know when you watch Emeril and he's going, throw another patty of butter in, throw more butter in. That's easy. Like, it's much more creative, more challenging, working with like less and trying to find uh, creative ways of adding more punch and more, more flavor. So I'm just gonna put a little soap. Someone emailed me that they're nervous that I'm not using soap. So I'm gonna soap my hands up because this is a dugma, this is what we do. Um, here we go. So what we're gonna be adding in to make this really strong um, uh, marinade and something that's very, very easy, you dump it all into a bowl, there's no magic, there's no mixer, there's nothing needed at all. You're gonna be putting um, a teaspoon of honey, um, a little bit of some soy sauce, and if you have any soy sauce from the sushi that you ordered, use a few packets of those and get rid of those packets because why do we throw, we can't throw those out. That's like, that's, you know, that, that's a condiment. Um, we're gonna be using some fresh ginger, and, then, and I'm just showing you the ingredients. Um, and this is the fresh ginger over here. And when you're making a judgment call on ginger, it calls for three cloves of garlic. You have to use your judgment here about a clove and a clove. There's cloves that are like mama clove, like elephant clove, and then there's smaller cloves. You have to use your judgment, and A, if you hate garlic, disregard, don't need it, not a must, okay? But when you are using with fresh garlic, and this is a yucky garlic, um, you are, this is your average size garlic that we have right over here, okay? And um, you just wanna be chopping it and sticking it right. You can chop it um, or you can be um, putting it through your press as well. It doesn't really matter. So chop garlic. Um, and then we're gonna be adding some, we have curry powder. Is curry powder one spice? No, it's not. It's actually, a, it's a variety of different spices that are put together as a mix. And every mom has their own curry powder mix. But the basic ingredients that are found in a curry powder, you have coriander, you have turmeric, which is what's making it yellow. You have fenugreek, you have cumin, which is the flavor of uh, falafel, like that very, very strong flavor. Um, you, sometimes you have chili, sometimes you have cinnamon, sometimes you have nutmeg, sometimes you have white pepper. There's a whole variety of them. You have to find your, cum your curry mix that, that you like, but it's a wonderful mixture to have. And no notice all my spice jars are very, very small because spices do lose their strength over time. So you don't wanna be having them in, as much as the guy in the spice store takes his big scoop and wants to sell you the biggest bag of spices ever, refuse unless you're gonna be sticking it in your freezer or giving it out as Mishloch Manot to all your neighbors and friends because the spices do lose strength over time. They don't go bad, but they just lose strength. So um, we just lowered the, the rice. The rice was at a boil, and I'm just gonna show you what the rice looks like. Um, 
Can you see Steffi? And Steffi is my assistant here today. Um, you're going to see that it's just bubbling. It's on very low heat. And you're going to see that there's going to be tunnels that are going to happen here. You never, ever want to disrupt those tunnels. So we're going to come back to that. But that's the beauty of having a glass lid. Okay, I told you we're going to be jumping a bit, okay? So the other ingredients that are in here, we have ground coriander. We have ground coriander. Um, we have turmeric, which is what makes mustard yellow. Um, the reason I'm not putting it into the bowl right now is because I made it beforehand, but it's just really, it's, it's just measure, dump, measure, put in, measure, put in, that's it. And you're gonna end up with a paste that looks like this. Very, very thick paste. And what we're doing is we're gonna take our chicken, which I told you I wanted to make it look like a TV show, and you have your kebabs that are uncooked, and put them each, you go, I put some sticks this way, some sticks the other way to maximize space. And you just take your pastry brush, that's not for pastry, that's for your meat brush, right? And just brush the chicken. And this is something, again, if you don't want to bother with the sticks, which I completely understand, um, this is just a novelty. Um, you don't have, you can just stick all of the marinade in a Ziploc bag, which everybody knows the Ziploc bag that everybody takes from North America. You put the Ziploc bag, you put your chicken in, you put your marinade and you go like this and you throw it into your fridge and let that marinate. And the bags are wonderful because it's so movable and it's not another bowl in your fridge that could fall out and break when you open your fridge. So I always try to minimize the amount of glass in my fridge because I have, I have boys in the house and you know, stuff happens, myself included. So um, we have our marinated chicken and I, I did this earlier in the morning. Again, can all of this marinade is delish. And remember, I can't use this anymore. So smother your chicken as much as you can. And, um, and then, you know, this, whatever's left goes in the garbage. Okay, guys? So I'm going to put this straight into the oven. And um, we're going to put it under the broiler. And you're going to see how fast it's going to be ready. It's just going to be crazy, crazy fast. You'll see. Okay. Okay, and that is the chicken. Um, any questions out there? Anything? Okay. All right. So you should know that um, satay chicken comes from Thailand, and Israelis are crazy about traveling to Thailand. Um, it's incredibly popular. And, you know, seeing that all of our planes, um, you can marinate. Someone's um, Evie is asking, how long can you marinate it? You can marinate it overnight. You can mar marinate it for 20 minutes. Chicken is, we'll take in whatever it's given, but it's not marinating it like, like beef marinates. Um, the, the, when you're using a marinade, the acid in the marinade really tenderizes the beef. That's not what's happening with the chicken. The chicken is just yeah, adding some flavor to it. So even if you didn't, you don't have an hour, even do it for 20 minutes and it's gonna give it flavor. So um, someone's asking if you would sesame oil. Um, you can put sesame oil in, but you have to know that sesame oil, if it's the one, the, the roasted one, it will have a sesame flavor, but that's absolutely fine. Um, right now, my temperature on my oven is at 350, only because I'm not broiling it because I, I'm scared I'm going to burn it, and I'm trying to do too many things at once. So, but what I would do if you were home, I would just stick it under the broiler and it'd be ready in like five minutes, five, seven minutes, because the chicken is so, so thin, okay? Um... Okay. Okay. So the next one we're going to go on to is the peanut butter sauce. And I don't know about you, but I could eat anything with peanut butter sauce. And peanut butter sauce is one of those yummy, yummy flavors that it's like, hmm, now my favorite sandwich in the whole world is a peanut butter and jelly. But this is not a peanut butter and jelly. This is a peanut sauce that's, that, that's tangy and it's spicy. And, and, and it's one of these very warming, warming flavors. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing this over the stove. Um, and the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding, we're going to heat some oil up and um, I'm just using some regular, oops, my canola oil just spilled. Um, I'm going to use some canola oil and in my massive bottle that I got for PESA. So, you know, God bless when we finish this massive bottle. Um, I'm going to heat up some oil in my frying pan that's over here and Steffi is here. She's going to be focusing on the stove here. Um, there we go. I'm going to heat up that oil. 
And we're going to be adding some chopped onion. And I'm using chopped onion. Um, when it says a small onion, a small onion, you're usually, big, big question, so there's a small onion, there's a small onion. I'm going to tell you it's about a half a cup chopped. You see everybody? And don't worry about the chopping. Just make sure that it's all chopped around the same, the same size, only because you want them to cook all at the same time. But we're going to be, you could puree the sauce at the end of it, so um, it doesn't really matter. You guys take a look at, at what's going on here. You see the tunnels? That's why you, why you don't want to mess with that, okay? So we have our chopped onion, and we're going to be adding that in. Um, we also have two cloves of garlic, um, one here. And I have, here is my olive of garlic, and let me get my knife. Um, this is a bulb of garlic, and it's a very small garlic. And the garlic is now becoming fresh in Israel, which is so young. It's so nice and fresh. So just put this in here. If you can hear that sizzle, that's the sound that you want. Um, and we're going to mix it with this. Here in a second, he's going to mix that up. And I'm just going to chop some, some of this beautiful garlic that is local from Israel, which is great. Um, because you always try to eat as much locally here, and you can't believe how much is local here and what, what we're blessed with in produce and abundance. So I often use that word shefa all the time. Shefa means abundance because I'm really struck with how much Israel produces for them, you know, on their own. And it, it's really, it, 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 it really impresses me. I mean, I am Canadian. A big shout out to all the Montrealers out there um, who, who I adore and where I grew up. And, um, but you know, there's not a lot that grows um, in wintertime in Montreal. So I'm so amazed that I have an orange tree right outside my, my kitchen window over here that I feel like I'm like a Tropicana commercial that I could pull, a, pull an orange out. Which still, it, it doesn't get old. It's something that's incredibly, incredibly exciting. So notice I added my garlic after I added my onion. And that's really important. Um, um, that's really important because first you want the water to um, evaporate from the onions. Onions are full of water, so the first stage of it is you're sweating your onions. And then what happens next is it creates a very moist environment, and then you add your garlic. Because once you add your garlic and it burns, there's no return. You have to start again. Okay? It doesn't get better. Um, so count yourself lucky that it happened in the beginning. And we're just going to really make that soft and translucent. And we're going to be adding our curry powder into here. So we have two teaspoons of curry powder. So you see that beautiful color. Um, we're going to be adding some chili flakes. And again, for all those who don't like chili, you don't have to use it. But just a little bit um, adds a really nice wow, wow, wow. Um, and that's, we're going to dry saute that just to wake things up. And literally, I suggest any time you are cooking, making a soup, and you're starting off with onions and carrots and celery, you want to wake up your spices because you want to know what direction it's going to be in. And again, when you don't use a lot of fat, you have to find ways of bringing out the best in your ingredients. And what, this is one way of a dry roast um, that really uh, highlights them even more. So we're going to be adding some coconut milk into here. We're going to add a little bit of that, a quarter of a cup of, of coconut milk. And, um, and a quarter of a cup of some water. A cup of some water to, to, to thin it out. And of course, we're going to be adding some of our peanut butter. We have a quarter of a cup of some peanut butter. And I'm using a natural peanut butter. Um, here we go. I'm going to move off. One big log. There we go. Delicious. Here we go. And that's all going to melt. And if your peanut butter has separated, don't worry, just shake it up a bit. And, and then what we're gonna be doing is, see the gorgeous color, I'm just gonna lower this. Um, here we go, we're just melting our peanut butter. And see my lemon, my lemon, my last lemon from my old cotton body, Claudia from her tree. So um, literally when you have a lemon, you want to, um, you want to juice it by literally rolling it on the counter to get the, the juices running. I'm going to go change with the screen um, to, to literally get the juices running and cut it right open. And what you want to do is you want to juice the lemon. And juicing the lemon, um, it's not on the right count. Okay. Juicing the right lemon is you take your fork. Can you guys see? I'm not sure where you're looking. You take your fork. You stick it right into your lemon, 
and you pry it. You're going to turn it and turn it, and that's what's going to make the, the lemon juice come out of it. What's the problem? Can everybody see? There we go. Okay. So we're just going to take the lemon, the fork, put it into the lemon, and when your lemons are at room temperature, they're going to be much juicier than other times. So again, pull it right in. You don't need any fancy gadgets, but pulling, look how like it really, really gets all the juice out of here. So your fork, A, we're using the fork to fluff up our rice, and we're also using it for our lemon. So here we go. Lots of pits. Pits go straight into the garbage or your compost if you do your composting. And the lemon is going to cut the, the peanut butter flavor, okay? So here we go. We have our sauce here that is peanut butter. And I'm just going to go. Everybody see how the peanut butter is breaking down? It's melting and it's looking really, really good. I'm just taking a look at the other ingredients. We have to do add a little bit of some vinegar. Um, so I have vinegar from my friend David who makes gorgeous vinegar out of all of our wine and um, some brown sugar. And our brown sugar, this is like the moist one that still has some molasses in it. And if you don't have any brown sugar, you feel free to use white sugar, no problem at all. Um, we're gonna be adding a cinnamon stick and a bay leaf. And again, these are two whole spices. Remember what I was telling you that you could have put one in your rice if you wanted to. Um, they only work if it's immersed in a liquid, okay? And you always have to remember that you're putting them in because if you don't, and then you puree your sauce, you're going to grind up your metal of your sauce, of your, um, your, your, your beater. So you always, especially with bay leaves, you always want to remember how much you're putting into it, okay? So we're going to let this continue cooking. Remember, look at all these amazing flavors. You have peanut butter, what kind of white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar, whichever kind that you have. Again, we're cooking from our pantry, guys. So this is a very forgiving. You really, really can't mess this up. Um, it's got a lot of wonderful flavors in here. Um, and again, like the predominant flavor is, of course, the curry and the peanut butter. Um, and if you don't have the coconut milk, you can use soy milk, you can use almond milk. Um, you can use tuna, absolutely. That'd be really interesting. I'm curious to see, but it won't be a peanut butter sauce, guys, okay? So you know that. You gotta keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we're just gonna let that cook. And, um, and we're going to come back to it. It's going to thicken in about five minutes, and, and then we can puree it, okay? So this looks, it looks really, really young. And we got a glimpse. I'm going to just show you what our rice is looking like. If everybody, why are we not right now? Okay. So if everybody can see, the rice has beautiful tunnels of rice. I am not messing that up, okay, guys? And if you feel nervous, you can take a look in the side to see if there's any water on the side, and then just turn it off and let it let it be, okay? Um, I'm not on the right thing. Okay. All right, so um, we've gone the peanut sauce. The peanut sauce is gonna cook for another few minutes, and then we're gonna, um, we're gonna zhuzh it up in our, in our mixer um, with a little bit of boiling water to, um, to loosen it up a bit. So I'm gonna ask, can you put the kettle on for a second? I just need a half a cup of water. Um, our next recipe that we're going to go on to is um, the cocoa date balls, okay? So let me just clean up this area because this is savory. And I want to take a fast look at my chicken. What's going on in my chicken? Um, here we go. The chicken is looking very beautiful. Everybody can see. And um, the, when you broil it, it's going to get a gorgeous, gorgeous suntan. So I'm going to give it the last second. I'm just going to broil it. And you're going to need to remind me because sometimes I get very distracted. It happens. Okay. So the next recipe we're going to be making is the date balls. And the date balls, um, I want to show you that we're using these amazing dates. That they're huge. Do you see how big they are? I'm trying to put it to something that... Um, oops, you know what guys, I think I forgot to put the ginger, did I forget, the ginger? no, I want to show you the ginger, okay. Um, the dates are huge, and, but the things with these medjool dates is that you want to make sure you open them up and remove the pit, okay, because, oh, is there no pit in here? Wow, that one's no pit. Okay, this one have a pit, here's a pit. You want to remove these pits, 
because they will really mess up your, your food processor. So this one miraculously has no pit. It's pitless. Um, here we go. Perfect. Um, taking out the pit. Here we go. Taking out the pit. I'm doing half the recipe because I, did, I, I didn't have enough dates, so I did half the recipe. Um, ooh, someone says to check if there's worms. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm wearing my glasses and I don't see any worms. So, really, okay, no worms. Um, okay, uh, we have our dates. And just so you know, the, what I want to show you, that the ultimate, the ultimate um, snack for me when, oh my gosh, is when you take, um, you take your, your date and you actually stuff it with different almonds or pecans. And you can keep these in your freezer and you just snack on them and they're really, really delicious. That's another way to use the date. So you just open them up, take away the pit and replace the pit with um, the nuts. My kids, I think, if that's what you're hearing in the background, I think they're starting to lose it a bit. So um, what we're doing is I have my food processor and the food processor, a second, just wanna kind of juggle a few things here. Here is the peanut butter sauce over here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna transfer the peanut butter sauce into um, a container that I'm gonna add some boiling water and we're gonna zhuzh it. Okay, so just put aside the dates for one second and I'm gonna put this on, um, we're gonna take, take the sauce. Remember, we have to take away our, we're gonna take away our, our, our stick and we're gonna take away our bay leaf. Okay, and we are gonna put it into this container um, because it's deep and just scraping out the sauce. Again, you don't need to do it in such a large frying pan if you don't want to, and especially such a heavy one. Um, don't suggest buying heavy pots that you can't lift because you are the one who's gonna suck. So here we go, we have our sauce. I'm gonna dilute it with a little bit of some boiling water. Okay, so just thicken it up because you want it to taste like a sauce. And we're gonna be putting in some fresh basil into it. Here's my gorgeous fresh basil. Okay, so the chicken, the chicken, the chicken. There we go. Woo! I smell that. So you can see it looks nice, gorgeous, and golden. Um, our sauce over here, and I'm gonna judge it, okay? And judging it is a word that I learned here in Israel, I don't know, everybody calls this blender a zhuzhar, okay? And this is probably one of my most used appliances that I love, and I don't want to get myself stuck in here. Here we go. And, okay, we're gonna put, the beautiful thing about this is called an immersion, immersion blender for a reason, that it gets immersed in something. The second you lift it off, it's all over you. Okay, so keep it immersed, as they call it. It's good to be moist for one second. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna Beautiful. And then this is a nice, this is a nice feature of it because then you can clean it properly. We have a gorgeous, gorgeous sauce. Wow, did it ever smell good? And this is gonna be for our chicken. So I'm just gonna pour it over here into this beautiful bowl that was handmade. Here we go. And you're gonna see that in one second. Okay, so back to our dates. Um, dates are a wonderful way, energizing, they're full of amazing flavor. And I'm gonna be using my food processor for this. And these date balls can be made out of really any dried fruit that you have in your, fruit, in your pantry. I know often our, our dried fruit sometimes gets hard. We have like four apricots, we have two dates, a couple of prunes here and there, and we have all these Ziploc bags everywhere and we never know what to do with them. A, just heat up a little bit of boiling water and let them sit in it, and they'll plump up again and be delicious. There's nothing, nothing wrong with them. Um, you can throw them into um, like, a, you know, apple cakes and and pies and anything like that because they're gonna add wonderful flavor, but you have to soften them first. That's very important. So what we're doing is I'm using the steel blade in my food processor and I'm just adding my dates and we're just gonna judge that up. Here we go. And just unplugged it. Here we go. 
You can see many, many um, recipes of these kind of energy balls online. Some people put oats, some people put almonds, some people put um, dried, you know, dried cherries, dried. So I have some dried cranberries because the dates are so, so sweet. You want to find ways to offset the sweet. So I have some chopped up almonds, roasted almonds, because anytime that you are going to have a nut, it's always much better when they're roasted because A, it increases their shelf life and it also um, adds great flavor to them. I also have some kamutsim, as they say here, like dried cranberries, which are very flavorful. Um, we have some roasted walnuts as well. And um, what other things? So what we're going to be adding is to this recipe, again, I'm doing half the recipe because I'm going to show you the other half that I did. Um, we're going to add some cocoa powder, so a quarter of a cup of cocoa powder, and um, a little bit of vanilla. I'm using some vanilla extract. Add a tiny bit because a lot of vanilla extract goes a long way and is very valuable here. This is my Trader Joe's stash that I'm at the very end of. And then I'm going to be putting some peanut butter in. And if you again don't like peanut butter and you want to use um, you want to use almond butter, you can use almond butter. You can use cashew butter. You really can use whatever you know. Just don't use butter. Um, butter is just is another way of saying something pureed these days. Um, but let's finish off that bottle. Love finishing off this. Such a good feeling. And we're going to puree this up together and you're going to see, okay, it's going to make a noise. Just hold out for me for 20 seconds. And to put this away. This is our cocoa. It's always good to clean up as you go because then you can actually see what you're doing. There we go. Okay, beautiful. So, see, it's sort of all crumbling. You're kind of like, ooh, Shauna, what is she making? So the beautiful thing about this is it comes together as a beautiful dough. You cannot believe this happens, but it really does. And it is so, so versatile. Um, go. And you just want to knead it a little bit on the counter. Look, it looks like Play-Doh, okay? And this is just dates and a little bit of cocoa and a little bit of vanilla. Look at it. It's like, it's the most malleable thing in the world. So what I'm going to do is, because I have, I have a bunch of roasted, roasted almonds, which I love. Um, they're full of energy and they get the great crunch. Whenever you're eating something, you always want to make sure that it appeals to all, all parts of your senses in your mouth, you know? So it's got to have texture. It's got to have crunch. It's got to have flavor. It's got to be a little like sweet, but not too sweet. And, um, so the more interesting things inside, I don't know if any of you grew up on marshmallow roll, uh, where you just melt chocolate. My friend Kelly Torchin's mother made the most amazing chocolate roll. It was baby marshmallows and chocolate inside. And she used to have these logs in her freezer and we would just slice them off. And the colorful marshmallows, like the really, really 50s stuff. Um, but it really, it brings back a lot, a lot of nostalgia. So this, I would say, is the healthier version of the marshmallow roll. Um, there is no marshmallow. Um, again, we're dealing with all fresh ingredients. So one thing you can do is A, you can make them into balls like, like as easy as this, okay? Super, super easy, great thing to do with kids. And guys, this tastes like chocolate. There's a lot of cocoa in here. And if they wanna hide a chocolate or a chocolate chip inside, you know, let them do that. Or what you can also do is just um, freeze it or, or refrigerate it in, this is, I mean, I don't know about you, but wax paper is like one of these very, very old, old items. This is not parchment paper, this is wax paper. Um, I don't even know what really people use wax paper for, but this is the kind of thing you'd use wax paper for. You want to take your log and you can wrap your log up. And this is for like, if you don't have time to roll, you can just make a log and then slice them as you need. You have some ladies coming over for tea, coffee, bridge, something, or you're just like you're dying and you just want something very quick, slice up, and you have an instant. And the beauty thing is that it's there, it's vegan and it's dairy free as well. So you just keep it like this. Um, and here, what you want to do also is that you can enrobe it in either you can do coconut, which I'm going to grab my coconut because I have fresh gravy um, coconut here. Um, you can roll them in a bit of coconut in my bowl here, 
um, put a bunch of coconut here and take your balls and just take your balls and roll them in coconut. Here we go. And they look like this, very, very pretty. Um, or you can also roll them in a little bit of some cocoa powder. You can just, I'm gonna add some cocoa powder in here. And the thing with cocoa powder is that you always really wanna sift it because sifting, um, sifting takes out all the, takes out all the bumps of it. So you can see that we have um, cocoa enrobed ones as well. So I'm going to show you what, what they look like. I'm going to take them out of the fridge that I did this morning. And you can see, um, yes, you can eat them right now, no problem. This was my log from this morning and I did some um, here and they're beautiful. And I'm going to put them on a nice little plate. Um, Nice little plate. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to splay them out here. These are the balls so you guys can see. And I'm going to show you the log as well. So the log, this is the cold one. Cold one's easier to cut. Here we go. And grab a clean knife. Not a serrated knife, which is what I was about to pull. Um, here we go. And you just want to slice them so you get a little cross section of everything. You get a little nut. I have, oopsies, here we go. The, the cranberry just fell out. Here we go. They're beautiful and they're energy bites. And they're really, really full of flavor. So I'm going to cut them all up here. And it's a wonderful snack to have that's no, no gluten and no flour and no matzo meal, thank goodness. I don't know what you guys did with all your matzo. I grinded all my matzo and turned it into matzo meal and it's in my freezer now for all my future schnitzeling that I'm gonna need. I couldn't look in another piece of matzo, um, so that's put away. So I'm gonna focus on the plating and I wanna show you just quickly, I made a, an easy salad because I figured you want something green with your beautiful, um, your, with your beautiful uh, satay dinner that you guys are gonna have. And basically, again, I had half of a romaine lettuce, I had some baby arugula, I had some baby spinach, and a Boston lettuce, and some cabbage. And I just, I always wash my lettuce beforehand. You always want to be using something like this to spin out the water out of your greens, because if your greens are wet, your salad dressing is not gonna stick to it. And if you want a super, super quick salad dressing, Take one of your old bottles, especially if you have an old mustard bottle that you're at the end of your Dijon mustard. Here's a little bit of Dijon. Just take a scoop of Dijon. Take, I have some pomegranate molasses just to give you a little bit of Israel here. If you don't have pomegranate molasses, you don't need to do that. You can just use um, you do lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper um, with the mustard. And you can even do um, a little bit of garlic if you want. There's no garlic in this recipe, so I'm just putting um, you can do one tablespoon of, of this pomegranate molasses. And I'm just going to do a little bit of some date syrup. Again, one tablespoon of the date syrup, which is just puree dates. If you don't have date syrup, you can use maple syrup, you can use honey. And then I'm going to add um, two tablespoons of some olive oil. That's it. And shake with a tiny bit of some salt and pepper. There's a little bit of salt. Always put salt with your hands. Don't open a jar and then pour it over because you know jars open up. A little bit of some freshly ground pepper because I love ground pepper. And shake, shake, shake. I love keeping old jars for exactly this reason. Um, and again, if you wanna make your salad interesting, you can use the extra um, dried cranberries, the roasted nuts, all in the salad. All that is amazing. That's what builds really good salads. So I'm gonna plate up the chicken, the satay chicken, to show you. Um, here we go, these are our beautiful kebabs, as everybody can see. Here we go, and you, how do you know when chicken's ready? Notice that it's all white and it's not pink. You don't want um, there to be pink um, coming out of your chicken because that means that it's just not cooked yet, okay? So just put it back for a couple more minutes. Um, but you see how quickly this cooked because of um, how thin the chicken was. So I'm just stacking them up. And you know, you eat with your eyes, so you know I love everything with a little bit of a suntan. And I suggest everybody goes out for a walk today and gets a little bit of vitamin D 
here we go, it's our chicken. And here is our beautiful um, peanut butter sauce, as you can see. Ta-da, and I'm just gonna take my beautiful rice. I'm using that word a lot, beautiful, but it is really, we're very lucky that we're in our houses and that we're blessed with all this food. Um, so you see all the tunnels in there? And so I'm gonna just take my fork, see how it's all separating. And it's not clumpy, um, it all just comes together. Nice, fresh, and again, feel free to use the long grain, whole grain basmati rice, which I also love. Um, and you can see, here we go. And see, see the beautiful picture? Okay. So I thank you guys for, for coming. I so appreciate your energy. Anybody have any questions out there? It's Yoma Shoa coming up this week. Um, and um, I know that they're asking people to put signs in their windows um, to commemorate um, this, this day, this important day in our history. And um, I know we all can't be together, but we you know, can show that we're all mindful of it and aware of it. And we are, we are always, we will always be connected, whether it's in a cooking class, whether it's in a holiday, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in Israel, we're all in this together, and I wish you all good health, strength, happiness, and, and good eating. So I thank you guys for coming. Be well. Uh, Shavua Tov, as they say here. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and thanks for joining. Hope to see you again.